two, one. Hey, internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe, the Synergy Collaborative, Synergy Lifestyle Academy, and I've got Saba on the line. You there, Saba? I am. Hello, Brad. Dun, dun. It's a wonderful world. I think it's fascinating that you can connect with people literally across the world in real time on this internet thing these days. It's, so you're, you're on the East Coast, yes? That's right. I'm in New York, Manhattan, New York. You kind of got a New York accent. I do, you know, because I was born here and it was my first language. So it's in there. New York is a language, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the Midwest for cripe's sakes. So we got that Minnesotan thing going on, you know. And they don't really talk like that here. That's a Fargo thing. And Fargo's not even in Minnesota for people that don't know. <laughs> so how long have you lived there? And all, all your life, born there? No, I actually was born here um, to Turkish parents. I left when I was 10, moved back to Turkey, year and a half there. Um, then from there, had some difficulties in adjusting to schools and so forth. And my father's job took us to Austria, lived there for four and a half years. Father's job took us to Iran. Um, for uh, a few more years, graduated from high school, started working there, lived through the part of the revolution, and then needed to find a country to live in. Um, I moved to Germany after looking at a few different countries at the age of 19, lived there for about a year and a half, then back to Turkey for another year, year and a half, and then, bingo, at 20, I was back in New York. Well, wow, you kind of seen the whole world from uh, A to Z, haven't you? I have. <laughs> well, that's good getting that. I spent, um, I, I traveled a lot. You know, I did uh, take vacations. I was an entertainer, a magician. So I had the ability to have a flexible schedule. So I did Brazil and Jamaica and Costa Rica and Bali and Thailand and all that kind of stuff. Nice. But the roots are here. I've spent 53 years in the same house before I got married. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Couple years in LA, a couple of years in Asheville, North Carolina. Other than that, I'm a Minnesotan. <laughs> <laughs> so you married and got kids? Yes, I um, I have one son, 15, and very happily married. Yay! Dun, 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 dun. Yes, actually, we celebrated our 19th anniversary just yesterday. Really? Did you yes. do something special? We did. We um, some friends of ours were kind enough to lend us their house uh, in the country. So after three months of lockdown in Manhattan, wearing masks and, you know, it's very hard to have social distancing here. Yeah. Um, so you end up being inside a lot. So it was wonderful to just breathe something other than my own breath <laughs> out in the country and, uh, and just be outside. It was, it was fabulous. Well, that'll be a memorable one, won't it? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Well, I don't do these real long, so I'd like to get right into it. And, uh, you know, the objective for being on here is to get to know who you are, what you do, and if there's somebody out there that wants to have that done. So, in a nutshell, what is it that you do? I see your logo behind you, Empowered Minds. Yes. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, I am Turkish. And through, in, in Turkey, um, in reading Turkish coffee cups, uh, which is in Reading, it's like a card. Oh, you, 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 you cut out a it's, little bit there when you're explaining that. You cut out on the coffee cup. Oh, I'm sorry. It's so as I mentioned before, I am Turkish, um, and or of Turkish descent. And in Turkey, it is very customary to read Turkish coffee cups, as we do, for example, tarot cards. So I was brought up seeing this all the time. And when I was in Iran, I happened to discover that I had this gift. So many years later, and through these years, of course, people would say, oh, read my cup, tell me what's going on, friends, family, whatever. I, I got my degree in computer science, was a software engineer for many, many years, had my own company, uh, designed equipment for blind people. And at one point I thought, you know, it would be fun, let me teach people how to read the cup. In doing so, I started getting a lot of private readings. And I wanted to understand better, how did my brain do this? I mean, I'm looking at a total stranger telling them not just about what's going to happen, I tell them about their past. 
And so I decided to take this weekend course in hypnosis. And I absolutely fell in love with it. So as a result, I went for the certification. And meanwhile, still doing my independent consulting and teaching uh, software design. And in so, I ended up doing a workshop after my certification to teach people how to lose weight through self-hypnosis. As a result of that, two people came up to me and said, I want a private session. And the rest is history. As a result of that, I started getting more and more clients. And at one point I said, I, I can't juggle all these things. And I decided to leave my software engineering um, work behind and continue on with just hypnosis and intuitive readings. Through there, I grew, um, brought in also biofeedback, which is essentially a computerized version of acupuncture. Mm -hmm. um, I have uh, a staff of several people, Reiki masters, another hypnotist, and I um, eventually opened a second company, which is Self Empowered Beauty, which does non invasive anti aging um, methods for the face and body. So it's all about feeling good inside, feeling good on the outside. So and that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> well, I totally get it. My wife is a shaman, so I understand a lot of Oh, that perfect. Kind of yes. And I've been down the path, but there's always the people that are skeptic, you know, reading tea leaves, what's that all about? Or the people that are like hypnosis, that's just a bunch of fooey and all that kind of stuff. But the, to me, the, the reading of the leaves, like they say, uh, as above, so below kind of thing, and everything's mm -hmm. all interconnected. So obviously, it doesn't matter if it's tea leaves or spaghetti on the wall, there is it's something no that is there to be able to, to figure out. And it's, uh, they call it intuition, but some people, I think the skeptics end up calling it like, like a, a mind reading or psychic and all that. And it's, right. to me, it's really not, it's more of a scientific thing. Like, you know, the Emoto and the water crystals and all that kind of stuff. It makes total sense that uh, when it's a full moon, if it pulls on the tide, it's going to pull on our bodies because we're 90% water. So it, right. it makes logical sense too. So when you're doing your, I don't know if you do any marketing or anything, do you actually try and convert the skeptics or do you go with the people that already understand it and just want to do the work? I don't really go for the skeptics and I'll tell you why. Is because if a person is a skeptic, I, I'll do webinars and so forth and workshops to educate people, but that's if they if they're curious. Otherwise, I wouldn't because if the person is skeptic, and I'll get people who come in for hypnosis and they say, I'm here, but I don't really believe it. But my girlfriend made me come because she wants me to quit smoking. You're like, you're wasting your money. Because no matter what I do, your conscious mind is going to sabotage that. Right. You have to be open to at accepting it or at least having an open mind to it. Um, so I'm not out to convert people. I'm out, my purpose is to help those, guide those who want to change their lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes total sense because that's kind of the way this stuff works. I mean, you never used to hear about people meditating and now CEOs meditate. And uh, it yep. takes some time for-, for They, they even have it as part of the, the corporate uh, benefits. Sure. I, just, I think the world is shifting a little bit. I've never understood why someone would uh, like the war on peace or, or um, the war against drugs. Mm -hmm. Now you got, a, you got drugs and you got a war and that's what you got because that's what right. they're doing. So it's a whole consciousness kind of thing. Right. So, I totally embrace that, not working with the skeptics, because if that's your belief, I mean, if you believe you think, if you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. It's kind of that yeah. thing. <laughs> so is there any specific group of people that you prefer to work with, like uh, males versus females or elderly versus youth? Or For me, it doesn't make any difference. I mean, we work with, um, my, my youngest client has been as young as two years old. And my oldest client, oh, uh, some, I think she was 92. Um, so I've, I've had the whole range. Um, I will say that the majority of 
my clients, our clients, tend to be usually in the later 20s, early 30s, to somewhere around mid 50s. That's sort of typical, yeah. most of them being female. Um, I think females are just much more open to change. Um, mm -hmm. Men tend to be more of let's put out the fire. Right. You know, there's a crisis, let's, let's just kill that, that fire. Um, in these processes, hypnosis is not a magic wand that you're gonna come in, cluck like a chicken, bark like a dog, one, two, three, snap my fingers, and you're so-called cured. No, it's bringing awareness, and it is guiding you, bringing out your, your, um, the thoughts of your unconscious mind, whether those are limiting beliefs, negative thoughts, diminishing those and strengthening those thoughts, those memories where there is empowerment. Mm -hmm. And then guiding you. Um, I think in many cases, men are, they, when I do get a man who comes in, they're looking for the snap my fingers three times and, and fix me, right. I don't have time for this. Yeah. Um, and not to say that there aren't any men. I do get plenty of men who come in and they, you know, we work together and they reach their goals and it's all wonderful. But I would say probably a good 80% of my clients are female. Uh, generally speaking, that's just it. Men are more like problem solvers. They're logical. Yeah. I look at uh, like females are analog, men are digital. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of more... Yeah, and, and, and even the size of the brain is accordingly. Mm -hmm. um, the right side of the brain tends to look at a, a look at the overall um, condition, and the right side of the brain on men is larger than in women. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I work with a, a friend of mine on occasion. He does breath work, and that works better for me because I've tried the hypnosis thing, but my logical brain goes in and tries to it basically combats. So it's, yeah. it's difficult for me as a with a male logical yeah. brain. And you've got to find the, the modality that works for you. And sometimes it requires several modalities. And that's why we offer the Reiki. We offer um, the different types of hypnosis even. Um, my it's good to, good to hear that because a lot of people say, so what do you do? And then you tell them, well, I'm this. And the reality is, is you need a toolbox with the pliers and a screwdriver and a hammer and some nails. Absolutely. And need a lot of different stuff. Yeah. yeah, and you've got to see what, what's going to resonate with you. And, uh, and sometimes they work together, you know. Yes. My, yeah. my wife being a shaman, she's really into the dream work thing, but she also does uh, the numerology and she works with essential oils and she does you know, different things, the drumming, you know, the, the yeah. sonic resonance kind of thing. So all of that stuff, it's kind of- I actually find great. that generally when we combine is when we get the best results. Mm -hmm. um, simply because each one of the modalities is going to be touching on a different place. Um, like I love to use hypnosis with biofeedback because the hypnosis is going to work on the unconscious mind. Yeah. The biofeedback is releasing the stress blockages at the organ level. So now physically, you're feeling better, more energized, more balanced. And at the same time, your unconscious mind is having a more positive outlook, creating more positive, more motivating thoughts. Also, do you, when you're looking for clients, or maybe you don't look for clients, they just kind of come to you by putting, the, putting it out there into the universe like that? Um, are you looking for people in a specific that they have specific problems, like you said, the smoking or the weight loss or financial blocks or? You know, we we don't. Um, basically, our theory and there's nothing, not not to say that there's anything wrong with uh, plenty of hypnotists will focus on just smoking or just weight loss. Our theory, more so, is that whether it is a weight issue whether it is a, a smoking anxiety stress, it really all boils down to the stress at the end of the day. The other things are the symptoms of the stress anxiety. 
Now, some of these things may have become habitual, such as the smoking. Um, in the condition, in the uh, case of weight, for example, that may be an anxiety that triggered it, but now there's stress blockages that are preventing nutrients from being absorbed. Mm -hmm. Or perhaps it's what they are eating that is causing the, um, the, the lack of focus, the lack of discipline. So again, the biofeedback will help in that because that's gonna show us what's going on in the body. But generally all these things get triggered from the anxiety. I was great all day. I didn't you know, eat any junk food until I sat down at night and I all of a sudden I just weakened and ate three bags of, of chips. And that kind of thing, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that, that kind of thing can be found through a hypnosis situation because maybe there's something that triggers that and it might be a certain TV program that's on or uh, exactly. a certain bird out in the woods made a sound that used to do that and you grab those chips. Right. You could just allevi alleviate that issue. You won't have the chip. There are several things that it could be. You know, it could be a memory. Um, it could very well be that they're maybe at night feeling a little bit depressed. Their serotonin drops, their happy hormone, at which point they have an urge for chips because as a child, when they would get together with the family and sit around laughing and their thing was eating chips at night. So the mind is saying, I want you to feel happy. Eat chips, that'll make you happy. Mm -hmm. So people have these problems and these situations and they end up getting frustrated or they, like stress is an interesting one because it kind of sits below the surface and you don't really even notice it because it slowly creeps up on you. Right. And it's something you got to be concerned about because it's one of those hidden things and then all of a sudden it'll attack. And I know this because it happened to me. I was... Yeah, I had an exposition management business and it slowly got stressful and I had a, a mild stroke. I had a, a, it's called a transient ischemic mm -hmm. attack. Yep. And uh, I thought, what the heck? I, I'm super healthy. Well, how did this happen? And it was just because of that subtle, just small stress levels that you don't even notice. Yeah. So, so for people that might have that and they don't even know it, is there something that a person can, like, do you have like a workbook or something that people can kind of go through and do some checklists and are you feeling this or that? Or is there something on your website? Yeah, that people I, can I don't really have a checklist for that because everybody's going to exhibit their stress in a different way. Plus, as you said, most people don't even realize that they're under stress because stress has become a norm in our life. Mm -hmm. And Actually, I think that COVID-19 has been a wonderful awakening for us to recognize how the stress that we actually were under. Yeah, it, ha it has. I'm, I'm in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and it got triggered here. <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. And to, to recognize that, oh my gosh, you know what? Now that I'm working from home, I realize how much stress I was actually under. And yeah. so, you know, these are the type of remarks that I'm getting from, from our clients. Um, so, so, no, I don't have a checklist. So there's something on your website that people can, like, access and get a hold of you? Maybe there, do, like, a trial session? There's tons of information on our website. Okay. And there are, we, we do a lot of webinars. So there's clips of our webinars on, on the website as well. Um, explanations of how hypnosis works, biofeedback, Reiki, all of that. Everything is on there. Okay, well, I don't like to do this too long, so let's get to it. And how do we access your website? What is that website? Okay, so it's, um, it's the company name, selfempoweredminds.com. Okay, so that's and three words together, selfempoweredminds.com. Yes, and just as you can see in, in the logo, of course, it's a website, so there's no spaces. Perfect. Well, that gives us a way to contact you. And, and are so you everything I, is on there. Um, the the hold of you, uh, they can access you there. Yeah, well, it will go to the our, our office manager, um, and then at the moment, of course, you know we're all you know making do with working at, from home. Um, um, we just opened up this week, 
Um, so we're, we're doing limited face-to-face -face and slowly transitioning back into the office. We've been doing remote sessions. Um, I've, we've been doing remote sessions for years anyway. I mean, I've got clients worldwide. Uh, so obviously they don't come into the office. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we uh, all throughout the country and throughout the world, um, just, you know, via Zoom, we do the sessions. Well, um, that's what I'll be doing. I'll take this video and I'm going to propagate it out to the YouTube and out to internet and social media and platforms and stuff like that. And when people type in that keyword, yeah. smoking or whatever, they'll be able to find it. Well, Saba, I appreciate you taking the time. I'm going to get to work on this and get it so out much. there. And um, if you want to do another one of these down the road, like if you, if you do like, you know, live workshops or seminars or retreats or anything like that, just let me know and we'll put the word out. Well, we have one coming up actually tomorrow. We have a oh. series that we do intuitive readings by moonlight. Oh, cool. And it's with my Reiki master, uh, Jenny. And what we do is um, it's a, both a hypnosis and Reiki session. Um, there'll be a ritual. Every, every phase of the moon holds a different purpose. Um, this one is going to be the first quarter moon. And so this is about letting go, forgiving and manifesting. So what we do in this is after we do the hypnosis and the Reiki and we do, uh, we, we uh, tell a person how to do a ritual for it and then we do intuitive readings. So people get to um, put in one question and then either Jenny or I will do an internal reading and give them an answer on that. Got it. And you do these on a regular basis? We do it monthly basically. Oh, good. And yeah, and then we have other webinars as well, but that one's tomorrow. Well, wonderful. We can look forward to next month and the months beyond. Perfect. Yes. Well, again, I thank you for taking the time and uh, peace, love, and happiness to you. Thank you thank so you. much, Brad. Appreciate you taking me on.